Thank you. Um, thank you all. Uh, I know I sort of spoke quite at length just recently. It was a bit of the kitchen sink, a uh, little bit of everything, but uh, we have a lot going on at the NRC, and I wanted to be able to touch on uh, a number of those issues. Um, as you all are very well aware, I'm certain that yesterday was the second anniversary of the Fukushima accident. And uh, I just want to let you know that we're making good progress on our Fukushima recommendations and uh, that we expect to hear from industry, for instance, uh, very soon this month on their flex approach to uh, the mitigating strategies for beyond design basis accidents order that we issued. Um, among other things that we will be hearing from the industry on this coming year. Um, on sequestration, uh, I think uh, our EDO talked at length about this, both in his talk and during questions. I just want to reemphasize that we will uh, certainly always maintain our central safety mission and, uh, and reemphasize that we are not expecting furloughs at the agency, but of course, after time, there will be a price to sequestration, as there is for, for every government agency. And finally, I know that many of you have probably been asking, uh, I know a number of you have been asking about the San Onofre plant in Southern California, um, and I just want to repeat that we will not let any plant operate until we are assured that they can operate safely. So with that, let me uh, not take up any more of your question time and offer it over to you. Chairman, good morning. Stephen Dolly with Platts. Uh, you mentioned during your uh, plenary just now uh, your your visit to Fuku oh, sorry <laughs> your your visit to uh, Fukushima and the devastation that you saw there. Um, can you tell us a uh, update us a little bit on the uh, the commissions and the staff's activities on um, actions to address in the future potential economic consequences and land contamination that might result from severe accidents? Yeah, we're right in the middle of um, finalizing the vote on economic consequences, potential economic consequences. So I can't give you more details than that, but you know, stay tuned and within the next week or two you'll, we'll have more to say. Okay, thank you. Okay. And just real quickly, you, um, w last week we heard there would be no furloughs. Today we're hearing you don't expect any furloughs. Is there, am I being too criminological yes. or is it there a possibility that you're saying there will definitely not be any furloughs definitely as a result of the sequestration? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Emily from Nuclear Intelligence Weekly. Um, and my question's on the filtered hardened vents. Mm -hmm. um, the Japanese regulator, as I understand it, is also considering whether or not to go forward with the filtered hardened vents and you all are still in the middle of your decision. Right. And so my question was, are you at all concerned about um, public perceptions if the NRC decides not to require them at all BWRs and then the Japanese regulator does decide to do that? You know, certainly it's important to, for us to understand what is going on in the international community with a variety of the Fukushima recommendations that we've made. It's, it's important for us to understand what others are making, I think in general, we are all generally on the same page with uh, lessons learned from Fukushima and what we're requiring of our licensees so far. Uh, but uh, I can say more about the filtered filtering issue once we have our vote finalized. Okay. Again, it's a similar time frame to the economic consequences vote. I'm Brian Wingfield with Bloomberg Hi Brian. News. Hi. Uh, the Mitsubishi report that was made public by the NRC mm -hmm. last week seemed to indicate that there was you know, potentially some concern about the generator tubes uh, before they were installed. I'd like to know what the NRC thinks about that and should anything be done. You know, that report is something that we are considering in our analysis of what's going on at Songs, but we're also trying to understand a number of other issues as well. Uh, in general, we are trying to make sure that the the licensee understands and we understand the root cause of the problem and we want to make sure that we understand and the licensee understands that the plant can operate safely with the given proposals by the licensee and we're in still in the process of evaluating that. Were you satisfied with Mitsubishi's report though? 
was I satisfied with it? I don't, I don't know that we were you know, particularly satisfied or dissatisfied. It's, it's just another piece of information in our overall process of evaluating the, uh, the, the reactors and the steam generators at, in particular at uh, Songs. Thanks. Hi, my name is Shiro Namekata from Asahi Shimpun Japanese Daily Newspaper. So my question is also about filtered band. There seems to be uh, tremendous pressure from Congress members saying that it is uh, not cost effective, uh, while some others argue that uh, you should instru instru install as quickly as possible. So uh, uh, how do you feel uh, that uh, the pressure from Congress members, Congress members' argument, and uh, what are you going to deal with the situation? Thank you. Well, I think it's important for us to take into account all views. As I said during my uh, speech, I think it's important for us to hear the views of, of a wide variety of uh, people who are interested, and that includes Congress. So certainly, we're, I'm interested in, in what they have to say, and we've been hearing from both sides of the aisle and, and uh, both sides of the issue here. Um, and, uh, and we've been hearing from a variety of others as well on this issue. So we're, we've all take, we've taken it into account, and uh, we're in the voting process. So I can't, I can't really go into more detail than that. Hello, uh, my name is Kosuke Ito. I'm a reporter from the GG Press, it's a Japanese newswire company. And uh, um, my question is, uh, uh, US uh, uh, regulatory, uh, actually NRC and the uh, Japan's regulatory uh, body, uh, NRA, uh, has agreed to establish the steering committee uh, right. last December. And uh, is there any specific uh, area or specific issue uh, coming to your mind? Uh, the how to co cooperate, how to collaborate? Yeah, not, not, no specific issues. We had a good meeting last December uh, in Japan, uh, just before the Fukushima Ministerial, uh, and, uh, and our staffs have been um, talking since and, uh, and working together since, and uh, we will continue to maintain a close relationship with the new Japanese regulator. Hi, Chairwoman Hannah, Northern with Greenwire. Uh, you talked a little bit in your speech about concerns with uh, renewing the lease for the headquarters or the campus. Can you, is that because of budgetary constraints? And, um, you know, what is, what's causing that? And what might working via satellite entail? Well, we already work via satellites, right? We have, th we've had four, I think we're down to three satellite offices around Rockville and Bethesda. Um, and in fact, the NRC has been in satellite offices for decades and decades. Um, and we're trying to consolidate to one campus so that, for instance, our research staff doesn't have to spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes on the metro coming down to a meeting and then going back and then coming down. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the issues with two white flint, this has to do with the overall general requirement um, that uh, GSA and uh, has of reducing the footprint of federal agencies. And so it's, it's a matter of, of working it out with that. But we've, we've developed a very good working relationship with GSA. So. Uh, Matt Wald, New York Times. Is the NRC avoiding furloughs because so much of its budget comes from user fees or is there some other reason? And if you do end up w in an extended sequester, what will the difference be say five years from now? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure what the difference will be five years from now. I mean, certainly there will be there will be longer term impacts on the longer term programs, as you as uh, the EDO mentioned. The reason that we've been able to avoid s furloughs, I think, it's twofold, and partly it's that uh, the folks here are very careful. They're very conservative and they plan very carefully. But the other part is that we are a single line item in the budget. Unlike the Department of Defense, which has 2,500 line items, and each of those has to take that 5% cut, we have to take a 5% cut just on our total budget. So that gives us the, uh, the ability to um, 
<clears throat> to basically decide where to cut. Gives you flexibility. Yes, but exactly. Could, but could you give an example, obviously you're not looking forward to the sequester, but could, could you give an example of a specific program that we might feel sorry about later for having defunded well, mail? Well, personally, I'll feel sorry about the elimination of grants to universities. And wh what are those used for? Uh, they're used for research, they're used for faculty development, they're used for course development, they're used for uh, graduate and undergraduate support. Hiroto Fuseya, uh, NHK Japanese uh, bro uh, broadcast company. Uh, my question is a uh, broad, uh, broader one. Uh, uh, two years just has passed since from the severe accident, and uh, what evaluation do you have uh, current Japanese regulation uh, action or reco uh, recovery from the accident, especially uh, nuclear reactor? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, you know, I w I'm, let me say a couple things. I had the opportunity, as I mentioned, to visit Fukushima in December. And uh, I was very impressed with the amount of work going on at the site. You know, they had over 2,000 workers, and they'd already taken off the, the top sort of destroyed bit of, of the Unit 4 reactor. Uh, they were preparing a roof to put on, a new roof to put on the Unit 4 reactor so they could begin to move the spent fuel at the end of this year. Uh, that was all very impressive. Um, at the same time, there's clearly a huge amount of work that needs to be done there. Um, you know, they've got four reactors that are damaged. They've still got cleanup from the tsunami. They have a lot of contaminated water. Uh, so there's there are a lot of challenges that remain. Um, and, uh, you know, we, as I said earlier, we've had the opportunity to meet with the new uh, Japanese r regulation authority. And uh, um, they are seem to be operating well, and uh, we look forward to working with them. Uh, Hannah North with Greenwire. Chairman, just one more question. Can you give us an update? You said you had, um, some months ago, tasked the staff with looking at the effects of climate change on the nuclear fleet. Can you tell us anything about that review? Or I, I haven't formally tasked the staff with that. You have not, okay. No. But you said you had asked the staff to look the, the, the staff are including that in their analyses, I think, in general, but, uh, but it's not, there's no specific tasking there. And any lessons learned there? Uh, we're still in the process. Hi, Chairman. Uh, Hi. Lynn Garner with Bloomberg BNA. Uh, when you were talking about more emphasis, you wanted to see Congress and the White House put more emphasis on the back end of the fuel cycle. Have you had conversations or discussions yourself with members of Congress or uh, people in the administration, uh, or do you plan to sort of push this um, yourself as a way to get some action on this? Uh, well, I think I've been pushing it for years now. <laughs> this has <laughs> been an issue that's been very important to me for many years, you know, before I was on the Blue Ribbon Commission and during, uh, during my time on the Blue Ribbon Commission. Um, and I'll talk to anybody who wants to listen about how we really need to resolve this problem and how we actually already have a really good model in this country in the form of the Waste Isolation Pilot Project. So. there been any recent conversations with members of Congress or the White House or the, the administration about about this issue that you've had? About this particular issue? I've yes. had conversations with uh, members of Congress and and, uh, and some folks in the White House about a variety of issues. Okay, thank you. Time for one more. Anybody? Emily Meredith again from Nuclear Intelligence Weekly. Are you concerned at all about the um, higher fuel burn-up rate as utilities are seeking to extend the length of time that they leave yeah. um, the fuel in the reactor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Just getting over a cold here. Um, sorry. Try not to pour water on you, Ellie. <laughs> yes, I think that's a very important issue. I think we do have to pay attention to higher, higher fuel burn-ups and uh, not only in you know, reactor performance, but also, again, uh, here's my back-end focus, on the spent fuel pool, pool performance, on uh, dry cask performance, and this is an issue that we are already actively doing research on. Thank you very much.